obviously with uh, Brooklyn canceling their game today, yeah. um, next game is on Christmas with you guys. What What's the feeling or, or, or <laughs> does that um, sort of affect your guys' side pieces all as we're kind of Kyle, Kyle, you just told me some news that I didn't know about because I don't think any of us is even thinking about Brooklyn. Everybody in our room right now is worried about San Antonio. <laughs> and we're focused on that right now and, and, and our own team and trying to get better. And so whatever happened with the Brooklyn game, we're not even, we don't have the luxury to look that far ahead. Hey, Not that we're uh, totally bored of you, but um, please how's Frank be. Doing? How's, how's Frank doing? Um, and, and I guess kind of what's it been like coaching um, with someone remotely uh, this <laughs> past uh, couple couple of days? Uh, Frank's doing better. He's doing great. Uh, we had our Zoom meeting this morning. Um, it's new for me. All of this uh, communication, coaching wise and media wise, via Zoom. Um, but it is what it is. I said it last night, you know, this is the lay of our land. Uh, the less we get caught up in the so-called negative of it, uh, the better. And so I don't, I don't really complain about any of it. I'll just take it in stride and I do it whatever uh, Coach Vogel is asking of me. All right, Alan. Hey, Dave, um, just curious, because of the way uh, THD just struggled from the field yesterday, young player, is there is a conversation you have with him? Is it, no, hey, don't pay any attention to it. We get ready for the next game. Just curious if you approach that differently just because he is just 21 years old. No, we coach it. We coach it. We coach it hard. We just had a great film session, uh, team film session, where we showed a lot of his struggles, uh, shots that, some of his shots were good shots, but the ones that weren't, we coached him on those. We coached him on some of his decisions at the paint where he could have made an extra pass. Um, you know, and we don't let anything fall through the cracks with the young guys. You know, a veteran guy, you may be able to brush over some of that stuff because they've been through it and it was just a bad game. But our, our young bucks, they're being developed and they need to understand good basketball from bad basketball. And he's a very receptive uh, and a guy who he's very receptive and he's a guy that wants to be good. Dave McMiniman. It is, there's a period of the season where it looked like Russell was making some adjustments in terms of keeping his turnovers in check. Uh, but the last two games, he has 13. He lost both of them. And when you look back at, uh, on film, like how, how did those plays really compromise the defense and, and take away shots very often? Yeah, I mean, he, he really was making strides. And I think, you know, the circumstances over the last few games, I think with so many people being in and out, triggered a, a uh, this I think triggered in him that he he had to save us, and so some of his plays he was probably moving too fast, or trying to press when things weren't there. And again, these are things that we we just had. Like I said, we had a great film session. Guys are very open and receptive, and we just talked about connection things. That how do we okay instead of this play, what can we do within our offensive fundamentals to lead to a great shot for us? How do we use your talent that draws all of these players? to make sure that that leads to a great shot for us. And so that's what the whole film session was about offensively. Um, and again, a lot of the stuff is connection. You think, you know, Taylor's been out for a few games. He was playing great, comes back, he's struggling. IT just got added to the team. You know, uh, Trevor just got thrown in the mix. And some of this is rhythm and connection and understanding, you know, when a guy's zigging, I need to be zagging and, you know, those type of things. And so, uh, we saw that on the film. It's easy to look at the stat line and say, oh, Russ has seven turnovers and it's on Russ. But, you know, three or four of those are guys not getting to their spacing or, you know, not adjusting to how they're supposed to adjust to as Russ attacks. And so uh, we own it as a team. That's the fun part about being around this group is, is they don't get caught up in the noise of the results. They're more about can we keep getting better and, and attacking the issues and come up with solutions. And that's what today was all about. Mike Trudeau. Yeah, hey, Coach. Just wondering the challenge of, you know, you have a couple of guys that have been called up and haven't played. 
and you know maybe wanting to use some of them versus some of the vets, especially in the bench lineups where you might be looking for some more athleticism. How do you and Frank kind of go about those decisions and uh, as you piece together the rotation with all the absences? Yeah, you know, last night was a pr kind of a unique deal from the standpoint of that game kept kind of just hanging around and then they cracked it open at a certain point. But, you know, for me, I, I wasn't ready to put in one of the young G League guys as we're in the toils of trying to win a basketball game, you know, and, and, and take a veteran out of that mix as we're battling for a victory at home. Um, and that was just in that moment. Doesn't mean that I won't utilize them or won't uh, put them in the fire uh, if it's an opportunity for them to get in there. And last night easily could have been that, uh, but we just felt like at that time, under the circumstances, uh, let's just ride with the veterans. But I think we, you know, with our farm system and, and the way we develop guys and the different guys that's come through the crops here in, in LA, we feel very confident about playing young guys uh, especially if they got high motors and they got energy, because that's what this team, you know, needs around them is, is, is energy. And we didn't have Austin Reeves, who's our energy. We didn't have Malik Monk, who's our young energy. Obviously, just getting Taylor back, he wasn't himself with his young energy. And so uh, that's a vital piece of our roster. And, uh, you know, you can see when, we're, when we don't have it, uh, you know, we, we, uh, it's, it's blatant. You can, it's clear that we're missing it. And, uh, you know, so we're getting those guys back will be uh, a, a really welcome sight. But until then, those young G Leaguers are, they're up to bat for sure. <laughs> uh, BT? Fizz, what's it like with the guys trying to receive the message from you? What's it like for you to have to deliver that and be the main <laughs> sound? You know, um, I, I don't want to answer for them, but for me, um, I take myself out of it. It's not about me. Uh, I'm just a vessel here. I'm here to deliver information and try to give them the best opportunity to be successful and not get caught up in, is it, are, they, are they respecting me? Are they, are they listening to me? You know, I feel like I've done enough that they, they respect me. So I'm not worried about that. I'm not hunting for respect. I don't want anything from them other than their own success. Uh, and I think they know that that's, that's where I'm coming from, where it's, whether it's with our coaching staff or with, with the players. I'm just here to serve. Um, and that's just my approach to this. That's my purpose in this. And so, you know, for me, it's, a, it's, a, it's really just more of being selfless about it and trying to be honest about what I'm delivering. And I think in that message, if it's coming off with honesty and purity, that they're going to receive it correctly. And uh, so far, they have. And they've really had a great energy about it. They've had it's a solution mindset on when things go wrong. And, you know, they've been extremely helpful to me during the games when I'm trying to coach these games and navigate the situation of rotations and things like that. You know, the veterans have been the ones that's really been holding me up. And so uh, ultimately it's been fun, but Frank needs to come home. <laughs> Let's go, uh, Bill Warren. Hey, Fizz. Uh, Hi, Bill. But on, on, that, on that note you just alluded to, do you know for sure whether you're going to be on the sideline again tomorrow? Do you know what, what tomorrow looks like yet? You don't. I don't. We wait, <laughs> we, I, I think it's, uh, you know, we just wait to see what's happening next with Frank's test, and then we go from there. But I don't care. Like I said, it's not about me. I'm ready if they need me to step in that seat, and I'm ready if I need to be there to support Frank. Um, yeah, we just gonna. It's a day to day situation, and we just gonna. We're not gonna get caught up in the, the how uh, unfortunate all of this is, or how you know disruptive it all is. Because all we can control is our response to it, and my response is to serve. And, and then secondly, what's what's Dwight's status going forward? Does he need more time to get um, kind of just back up back up to speed after after missing that time? And, and what do you expect from him? Yeah, he got us. He's getting. A, he got a sweat in today, and I, I, right now, going into it, I think he'll be ready for us tomorrow. Hopefully, uh, I don't want to put a full stamp on that, but right now, going into it, we're hoping that he will be available, and that will be, you know, obviously, we'll be really happy to have him back. Um, Mike, do you have another question, or is your hand just still up? 
I do not. I will put it down. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So our last question will be all good. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, end with Davide. Hi, Coach. This is uh, Davide from Italy. Hi, Davide. The Civil Center is changing name on Christmas. Um, I'm curious about what, what's your best memory of the Civil Center. Wait, I'm sorry. I didn't hear your question. Can you say yeah. it again? <clears throat> the Civil Center is changing name on Christmas Day. So what's your best memory of Civil Center as um, it is right now? Unfortunately, now that I'm a Laker, it's probably not good to say it. But it was my first time winning in the Staples Center as a head coach <laughs> was probably my best memory of the Staples Center uh, against either – it might have been the Clippers we beat, so that's okay. Uh, but obviously, you know, getting your first win back home in the home arena, uh, you know, that's a memory that, that will always stick with you, with your whole family there, you know, all my cousins, my mom, my brothers and sisters, my nieces and nephews, everybody was at the game. And, you know, to get a win at Staples Center that, and, you know, to have a picture of it with all of us together uh, is a great memory for me, uh, you know, in that time.